Welcome to Atomic Mass. In the last video, we found out that not all atoms of the same element are identical. In fact, there are isotopes of elements. In this video, we'll be looking at something called atomic mass and how to calculate a weighted average. In the last video, we introduced isotopes and what a mass spec does. Recall that a mass spec can figure out the mass of particles in a sample. As it turns out, we are able to determine the amount of isotope in a sample by using a mass spec. For example, chlorine has two isotopes. There's chlorine 35 and we have chlorine 37. If we put a sample of chlorine into a mass spec, it will first of all tell us that these are the two masses of the, of the isotopes in the sample. It will also find out that any sample of chlorine will have 75.8% chlorine 35 and 24.2 percent chlorine 37. This is all information we would get from a mass spec. Because these percentages do not change from sample to sample, we call them the percent abundance of an isotope. We can use these percent abundances to determine a special kind of average called a weighted average. Well, So what is a weighted average and how is it different from a regular average? To find that out, let's first look at a general example, and then we'll come back to isotopes and see how a weighted average applies to isotopes. So here we have our first example. So we have student A's grades. Student A has a test average of 90 and a homework average of 20. If I were to ask you what student's overall grade is based on these two categories, you may take a regular average, which is 90 plus 20, and divide by 2, which would give you an average of 55 but you're making an assumption that tests and homework are worth the same amount. So this idea of what these things are worth is going to matter when we talk about weighted averages. So let's try this again with new information. This time I'm going to tell you that tests are worth 75 percent of the grade and homework is worth 25 percent of the grade. So now when you go to calculate student A's overall grade you're going to weight the test category more heavily because it's 75 percent than the homework category. And this leads us to something called a weighted average. So mathematically, let's look at what this is. The first thing I do is I'm going to take the tests, which is a 90, and I'm going to multiply that by the percentage worth that tests are. Remember, when you multiply by a percent, you change it to a decimal. So you have 90 times 0 0.75. That's my, that's my term for the test portion of the grade. Now let's take into account the homework portion of the grade. I'm going to add the homework grade also multiplied by the worth of the homeworks, 25 percent. When I carry out this calculation, I'm going to find out that this is equal to 72.5, which is the weighted average of the student's test grade and homework grade. Notice how this is significantly different than the 55 we got by doing just a regular average, which assumed that these two things were worth the same amount. Now let's go back to our isotopes, our chlorine isotopes, and see if we can come up with a weighted average of what chlorine's mass really is. So here are my chlorine isotopes, chlorine 35, 75.8%, and chlorine 37, 24.2%. I'm going to set up my weighted average calculation to find the average mass of chlorine. So first I have 35 AMUs because that's the mass of my first chlorine isotope and I'm going to multiply that by the percent abundance, again changing it to a decimal first. Then I'm going to add my second isotope, which is 37 AMUs, and I'm going to multiply that by the percent abundance of that isotope, 24.2, I'm, I'm changing that to a decimal, so 0.242. And I'm going to find out that my average mass of chlorine, of all chlorine atoms, is 35.45 AMUs. So this is a special number because it tells me the average mass of all chlorine atoms, Okay, taking into account that there are many more of the lighter chlorine atoms than the slightly heavier ones. The term for this is atomic mass. One more note about the atomic mass is that if I take 35.45 and I round it to the nearest whole number, that's going to give me 35 AMUs which is the most common or the most abundant isotope. And that's a general rule of thumb. Anytime you round the atomic mass, 
you're going to end up with the weight of the most common isotope. That wraps up our discussion on atomic mass, as well as how we can calculate atomic mass. Make sure you write out in your notes any questions you have about this topic and bring them in with you to class.